Hello, and welcome to Mrs. Law's class. In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve polynomial equations. Now, before I do that, I'm going to show you the relationship between the roots, the x-intercepts, and the zeros of a function. Let's do this with an investigation. So when we graph the function f of x, written out here, using graphing technology, we're going to obtain the graph to the right that looks like this. So from the graph, we can see that the x-intercepts are here at negative 3, negative 2, and positive 2. Now, if we then take the same function, let's factor it using the factors to determine the zeros of f of x. So, possible zeros using the rational zero theorem states that we can have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. So these are all the factors from the number 24, which is the constant number. All right, so after some testing, and I can see that if I plug in 2, I'm going to get 2 to the 4, which is 16, plus 2 cubed, which is 8, minus 10 times 4, which is 40, minus 4 times 2, which is 8, and then plus 24. So if I add this up, you will find that you're going to get 0. Okay, now an easy way to do this is you can take all the negative numbers, negative 40 and negative 8, that's negative 48. If I add all my positive numbers, 16, 24, that's going to be 40 plus 8, that's also, go, sorry, that's going to be positive 48. So those cancel off. All right, so knowing that 2 works, I'm going to do synthetic division. To find the other factor. So I bring down the 1, we get 2, 3, 6, negative 4, negative 8, negative 12, negative 24, and then we get 0. So this actually gives us a new polynomial. So we had power 4, so now we have power 3. All right, so because it's a cubic equation, we now need to factor again or cubic expression, I should say. So the possible zeros this time aren't the same because our factor is now negative 12. So the possible zeros are 1, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. All right, so let's try 2 again. So when I try 2, I get 2 cubed, which is 8 plus 3 times 2 squared, which is 12, and minus 4 times 2 is 8, minus 12. So we can see we have the positive and the negatives of the same number, so this will give us 0. All right, so we are now going to do synthetic division again. All right, so we get 1, we get 2, 5, 10, 6, 12, and 0. All right, so now we have that the function f of x, which was equal to x to the 4 plus x cubed minus 10x squared minus 4x plus 24, we went through the process that first we found x minus 2 as a factor, and then we did synthetic division again, and we got another x minus 2. So now we have x squared plus 5x plus 6. And so if we factor this one more time, or factor the trinomial, we will now get x plus 2 and x plus 3. So we're going to use this factor form to determine the zeros of f of x. So notice that the zeros of the function are x is equal to 2, 2, negative 2, and negative 3. 
So notice that we compare these zeros from the factored form to the x-intercepts that we got here. They are the same. All right, lastly, let's set the polynomial function, which is the same function that we had before, equal to zero. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna determine the roots or the solutions to the equation. Now, when we do this, we're gonna take this equation and we're gonna go through the same process that we used to factor the function up here, okay? So when we do that, we're gonna get x minus 2, x minus 2, x plus 2, and x plus 3. And this equals 0. So we would now say that the roots, x are equal to 2, 2, negative 2, and negative 3. So what I want you to see is that the roots of the equation, which means that it's equal to 0, can be determined by the x-intercepts of the graph or the zeros of the corresponding function. So what this is saying is that the roots, the x-intercepts, and the zeros, they actually all equal the same thing. All right, so let's now take a look at solving polynomial equations. Now that we know that solving an equation is the same as looking for the x-intercepts or the zeros, of the function. So when we are solving, the first thing you should do is to always check if you can factor out anything or to find a common factor from the polynomial. Um, then you're going to use the rational zero theorem, the factor theorem, and then synthetic division or long division if you choose to find the factors before solving. So sometimes you may need to use the quadratic formula if the equation is not factorable. So recall the quadratic equation which is here. All right, so let's take a look at the first example. So we're gonna first list the possible zeros. Now we're gonna use the rational zero theorem because we actually see that we have a, um, a coefficient on the front here, so that's one and three, or plus or minus one, plus or minus three, and plus or minus one, and plus or minus two. So we list the possible zeros, remember, as b, over a, where this is our b value, and our coefficient in the front is a. So we're gonna go plus or minus one, plus or minus two, okay? So b over one, so one over one, two over one. Then we have one over three, so plus or minus one over three, and then plus or minus two over three. All right. So we can try one, but you'll see that one wouldn't work because we get three plus eight plus three, and that's gonna to be too big of a positive number. So let's actually try a negative number. And I'm gonna to jump to negative two, okay? So I'm gonna put negative two cubed is negative eight, so this is gonna be negative 24, plus negative two squared times eight is 32. Okay, and then plus three times negative two is negative six, and then negative two. So we can see that all the negatives are gonna be negative 32, plus the 32, that's gonna be zero. So we're gonna use negative two as our divisor in our synthetic division. So we get three, eight, three, and negative two. Bring down the three, and then we do our synthetic division. And we get zero. So when we factor, we get x plus 2, and now we have 3x squared plus 2x, and then minus 1, and that equals 0. So that's 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. All right, so this trinomial is factorable, and we get 3x minus 1, x plus 1, and that all equals 0. So x equals negative 2 one third and negative one. All right, let's take a look at another example. So here we have uh, possible zeros. Now we can see in this equation that 
there is a common factor of x. So let's factor that out first. So we get x cubed minus 4x squared plus 2x plus 3. And that all equals 0. So our only possible zeros are going to be plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. All right, so we can kind of do a little quick check. We can see that when we plug in 1, that's not going to work. And so let's plug in 3. So when we plug in 3, we get 3 cubed, which is 27. Minus 4 times 9 is 36. 2 times 3 is 6. And then plus 3. And that equals 0. Great. So using synthetic division again. So we're going to bring down the 1, 3, negative 1, negative 3, negative 1, negative 3, and 0. All right, so now what we have is x times x minus 3, and then x squared minus x minus 1 all equals 0. So we can see here that this trinomial is not factorable, so we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. So we get 1 plus or minus the square root, so b is negative 1, all squared, minus 4 times 1 times c, all divided by 2. Now it's nice to show all the numbers that you're putting into the quadratic formula instead of calculating it already beforehand, okay? So then you can just do the final step if you like, which is fine. So you get 1 plus or minus, and that would be the square root of 5, all divided by 2. So that's the solution from the trinomial. So don't forget that we also have a solution here. So x equals 0. And we also have a solution here where x equals 3. So let me put a box around this. So this is our solution for the second question. And this was the solution for the first one. All right, let's take a look at one more example so first thing again we're going to list our possible zeros and we can see that the constant is negative 45 so we have plus or minus 1 plus or minus 3 plus or minus 5 9 15 and 45. so we can see that 1 doesn't work or negative 1 so we're going to try 3. so 3 cubed is 27 plus 2 times 9 18 minus 45 great and that gives us zero so we're going to go three on the outside and one two now notice that there's no x term so we need to remember to put a zero in for our synthetic division so let's do our synthetic division this gives us 45 that gives us zero that's awesome so we get x minus 3 as one of our factors our other factor is x squared plus 5x plus 15 and that equals zero so we can see this trinomial is not factorable so we're going to use our quadratic formula so it'd be negative 5 plus or minus the square root 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times 15 all divided by 2 and this gives us negative 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 35 all divided by 2. Now normally we would say that this is no solution, but I do want to show you what happens or what we can do when we have a negative inside the square root. So we can actually rewrite this as the square root of 35 times the square root of negative 1 all divided by 2. And the square root of negative 1 is actually equal to the imaginary number i. So I can now rewrite this as x is equal to negative 5 plus or minus i times root 35 over 2. So this is an imaginary number or a complex number. And then don't forget that we also have the rational number of 3 as our solution. So these 3 would be our solutions and if we were only looking for rational solutions three would be our only answer but if we were looking for all solutions complex numbers and rational numbers so irrational and rational we would have um, the one with i and then just oh sorry and also three 